I'm completely tired of the suckathon happening. Content creators for the longest have been doing tricks on it for Konami just so they could get a box of the latest product early and an invite to their private island. Like how Diddy did it. Bro, if that was Yu-Gi-Oh cards instead of Baby Will, your favorite content creator was probably there. I was disgusted then when I did it, I'm disgusted now. But today, as one of the only content creators that was sponsored by Konami and can't go back because I keep telling the truth, I'm gonna be giving you everything you need to know about Rage of the Abyss. And I promise you, it's gonna be a lot different than what you thought. I think it's time a content creator gives you an informed opinion on a Yu-Gi-Oh set that's unbiased and doesn't care about being punished about their actions. Like I said in my last video, Konami, come get it in blood if you want it. We not stopping. So today you're gonna find out everything what you need to know about Rage of the Abyss. Let's go ahead and jump on in. <laughs> going on with ya big dog and it is an amazing day for Yu-Gi-Oh! I hope that's your day phenomenal but if it isn't don't let what happened at the beginning of your day ruin the rest of your day now when doing this video it is really important and keep in mind why someone would buy a Yu-Gi-Oh! set there are multiple different reasons and of course, Big Dog, not only will I be covering all of the reasons, I will be giving this set an individual and overall score, letting you know if it is worth it or not in that particular category or overall. I'm gonna be scoring it based on the competitive category, judging how popular these cards are going to be in the metagame. The casual category, speaking on what this set does for some of the nostalgic or even some of those anime strategies. The collector's category, meaning how good will this Yu-Gi-Oh set be over a long duration of time? And of course, investment. Investments. Those cards that you're going to have to have just in case in the future, they'll be really, really sought after. And with that being said, Rage of the Abyss is a 100 card Yu-Gi-Oh main set. We only get four of these every year. This particular set introduces new support for Allure Queen, Merville Atlantean, Battle Wasp, Centurion, Fiendsmith, Goblin Biker, Millennium, Sharks, Six Samurai, White Force. It also introduces the strategy as Amina in Primite. There's an import for Fire King as well as building on top of the TCG exclusive strategy Memento. And this set also gives anime support for Jack Atlas, Shadow, and Dennis McFeel, as well as Shark. To break down everything individually, Mermel's got two really important cards. Abyss Rhine the Atlantean Spirit, which allows you to be able to search a fish, sea serpent, or aqua monster, or summon it to your side of the field as well as Mermel Shadow Squad, which allows you to be able to modify the level of the monsters on your side of the field and summon Mermel and Atlantean monsters from your deck. This pretty much modernizes the Mermel strategy, bringing it out of total obscurity and puts it on the forefront of competitor players' minds. The problem? This strategy was not successful in the OCG. Now, to be fair, that could be due to two contributing factors. Since this is a special summon heavy Yu-Gi-Oh deck, Maxi is really powerful, but also Totally Awesome is completely banned in the OCG. I think those two factors play a pretty big part to why Mermels were successful, and the Maxi thing is the reason why Six Samurais were not successful either. Six Samurai did get a considerable amount of support. Legendary Lord Six Samurai Shein is an Omni Negation, and Six Strike Double Assault is another powerful card that helped modernize the deck. And the reason why I lump both of these strategies together is because they're both being modernized. These Yu-Gi-Oh strategies have not seen competitive play in over 10 years and were competitive in the OCG. If that's what the bulk of what this set is, it's going to be a little daunting. The shark support gives you surfacing big jaws, a really powerful card that can summon itself to the field when you activated a spell card and can search a fish, and a new monster number C32 Shark Drake Levice. This card is another huge boss monster for the Yu-Gi-Oh strategy, but unfortunately sharks are in a really interesting spot. While this deck did get support to push it forward, it did get everything in this set to help push it forward. And like I said before, these are going to be the bulk of what you're pulling when it comes to strategies that players are hopeful to be competitive. And the problem with that is hopeful. One thing that competitive players value is statistics and certainties. With these decks not being statistically good in the OCG, as well as no certainty right now, you could already say that Rage of the Abyss for the main cards is starting off pretty bad. But where it does make up for it is the engine cards and the sought-after staples. The Azamina engine brings a whole new layer to Yu-Gi-Oh! 
allowing you to be able to fuse with sinful spoils spell or trap cards is just another one of those eye rolling ridiculous things that breaks the mechanics of Yu-Gi-Oh. The important cards are the hollowed Azamina, which allows you to be able to fusion summon with those sinful spoil cards. Azamina Arcelago, which ties in your Azamina to your sinful spoils cards. And Azamina Sylvia, which is a card that allows you to be able to negate any of your opponent's cards. I want you to think that it is close to being a generic Borlode Savage Dragon, and that card's banned. Now, while these cards are super rare and ultra rare respectively, the really hard to get competitive cards just so happen to be the chase cards. Deception of the Sinful Spoils is what ties the entire thing together. A Sinful Spoils card that can be set with Diabell Star, searched with Snake Eyes Populous, and gets you into your Azamina cards just so happens to be a secret rare. And if that wasn't already bad enough, the Fiendsmith Lacro Scarlet Sorrow is also a secret rare, which is really important to Fiendsmiths because it's a light fiend monster that can be summoned and can send additional Fiendsmith cards from your deck to the graveyard. The engines that you need are going to be a lot more elusive than some of the other Yu-Gi-Oh sets. But overall, the impact of these cards are huge. What Rage of the Abyss lacks for in actually bringing a competitive archetype to the table, it makes up for with its powerful engines and staple Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Dominus Impulse is another hand trap being introduced into the card game and allows you to be able to negate the effect of a card, including a summon, and only locks you from being able to use light, wind and earth monsters for the rest of the duel yeah that, that's that's a busted card i think competitively this is one of those cards that is just outrageously broken right now but as time goes on and konami starts introducing more support for those particular elements it'll balance itself out on the other hand the most sought after card for the entire set is molchami flores this card is currently being a pre-sale at 170 dollars a pop and it allows you to be able to draw every time your opponent summons a monster from the main deck and extra deck. Crazy. From a competitive player's perspective, you can actually justify buying a case of this entire set. And if you decide to get a case of this, the numbers are on your side right now. What an average of three QCRs per box, meaning that you do have the potential of getting a Flores QCR or a Dominus Impulse, highly sought after cards, which can almost pay for the case itself. You also get in between one to five of every single one of these secret rares. Right now, hypothetically, if you buy a case and luck up and pull five Molchummy Flores, one QCR and a couple of Dominus's impulse, you more than pay for your set and competitively you're in the ball game. At the very worst, you can open one impulse in one Molcharmy and that's genuinely still not as bad compared to some of the other sets that you could have invested in. I think competitive wise, this set is an eight out of 10. Unfortunately, at the top end, these cards are so game changing, you just simply need to play them. If you have the means and wanna be competitive inside of this format, this does give you the best opportunity. And while I absolutely hate that Konami made these cards so hard to get, it actually makes it worth it for competitive players. Now, from a casual perspective, giving support to fan favorites, anime characters, and nostalgic decks. This one's incredibly tough because both Six Samurai and Mermel could fall under fan favorite, but as a casual player, you know for a fact you are not gonna spend a buku amount of money to be able to play these particular decks. Also, to touch up on it, Mermel, Centurion, and Fire King did get stronger. While they are one of's inside of this set, these cards are actually really good at progressing the strategies forward. Between that and the anime characters not really being impactful at all, Jack Atlas's card is Cursed Fire King Doom Burst. Shark does get the bulk of the support, but it leaves a lot to be desired because there are some more cards that we're waiting for to see the true potential of this deck. Also, the Metal Morph cards are ridiculously depressing. It's not even enough to make a full deck without going super casual. We have absolutely no confirmation if we'll be getting more support and what are we to do with that? If you are a casual player, not really looking to drop a ton of money into this set, unfortunately you're putting to a corner. All of those nostalgic and casual cards are a little bit harder to get. I would say for those particular players, easily a four out of 10. The irony here is that if you like Six Samurai or Mermos a lot, at some point in time, you are a competitive player because the casual players absolutely hated getting dominated by those particular strategies, but those same casual players like Tier Limit, Cash Tira, and Dragon Rulers now, so we're just gonna leave that one alone. Don't act like I ain't even noticed you like the Tier 1 decks after they stop being Tier 1, dog. From a collector's perspective, there's really only one card that stands out as an absolute gem. Ultimate Dragon of Pride and Soul is a 4,500 attack monster that just so happens to be a quarter century rare, meaning that we will never get another copy of this card ever again in that rarity. 
That, just like the Magicians that we received in the last four sets, as well as the card that we are getting in Supreme Darkness three months after this set, are going to be highly sought after collection cards when the dust settles years from now. I would say that in Heart of the Blue Eyes Quarter Century Secret Rare, maybe even Red Eyes Black Full Metal Dragon are going to be cards that are genuine gems. This set overall so far is just extremely top heavy. Either you hit really big or you go home. So my collectors, it's probably best to focus on getting these cards while everyone is focused on the competitive cards. You can even strike a really good deal seeing that the most competitive cards are also super expensive, meaning that there's potential that players won't even have the time to be looking at those collections until it's too late. Definitely would rather just buy the singles instead of cracking a case and hoping to get this. Though I do think that there are some valuable gems. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a five out of 10. And lastly, the investment. This one is tricky. From an investment perspective, decks like Mermel, Six Samurai, and Shark all have the potential. Keep in mind what I said at the beginning of the video, these strategies did not do well in the OCG, meaning that their prices are reflective of that. If they just so happen to do incredibly well now, you're in luck. And statistically speaking, at least one strategy out of every single main core Yu-Gi-Oh set has been competitive. A lot of people's vote would 100% be on Mermel. Mine would actually be on Sharks. I think both of these strategies do have potential, so pick them up if you can, and also pick up all of the previous Shark support, because Mermel has the potential to be really good right now. Sharks has potential to be really good in the future. I think from that perspective, it's still a really risky proposition. I personally like where we have safer bets take for example the last set with silhouette rabbit and dominus purge cards that were easy pickups it doesn't seem to be the case inside of this set though i do think that this is incredibly big or boomer bust i respect it i'm gonna go ahead and give it a six out of ten this pretty much means that if you have the excess funds go for it but if you scrape and buy i would not touch these cards for investment Rage of the Abyss overall as a Yu-Gi-Oh set reminds me of something that me and the other boomers used to say back in our day. YOLO! You only live once. Because the top end of the competitive cards we 100% know are going to be reprinted in a year, the fact that it doesn't feel like there is enough to bring the casual ends like some of the other sets, the collection pieces also being ridiculously top heavy, as well as the investments being boom or bust, the overall grade for this set is a 5 0.75. Let's just round it up to a six. I would absolutely stay away from this Yu-Gi-Oh set unless you are an ultra competitive player trying to win regionals, YCS, nationals, and worlds. I genuinely can't wait to hear what you have to say. Until then, big dog, hug a family member, drink some water, and check out these videos so I could catch you on the next one.